So last year, I reviewed a little game called Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. I really like that game, but I also really like the series to which it belongs. I love Oddworld for its artistic uniqueness, engaging world, darkly satirical storyline, and endearing characters. The original game, Abe's Odyssey, was a smash hit and a PlayStation classic, and its sequel, Abe's Exodus, was almost universally beloved as being a massive improvement on the original game in every way. But here's the thing. Series creator Lorne Lanning never really wanted to make Abe's Exodus, at least not the way it turned out. You see, Lorne Lanning planned a quintology of Oddworld games, but when Sony smelled a cash cow in the PlayStation pasture, they basically pressured the release of a follow-up right away. And while Exodus was a fantastic game, it wasn't the one Lorne Lanning really had in mind. But with the recent series revival and the remake of the original game not too long ago, Lanning had a second chance to continue the story of Abe the way he wanted it. And thus, we have Oddworld Soulstorm. Now that the game is finally out, was it worth the wait? Does it live up to the hype? Okay, let's be real here. It's been over a decade and a half since the last proper Oddworld game, and Soulstorm has been in development hell for about half of that, so it'd have to be like Breath of the Wild meets Persona 5 levels of awesome in order to be worth it, and as much as I hate to say it, it isn't. But let's back up a bit and talk about the game itself. Oh, thank you, sir, said Thomas. Now, for those of you who need a recap of the story so far, the first game, and by extension its remake, New and Tasty, was all about Abe, a quote-unquote employee of a shady meat processing plant called Rupture Farms. One day, he overhears a meeting where the heads of the company, who have run out of endangered animals to make into snacks, have decided instead to start chopping up their own employees, Abe's fellow slaves, the Madokans. Abe flees the compound, goes on a soul-searching spiritual adventure, returns to the factory to free the Madokans, and in the process, Rupture Farms is destroyed and most of the executives get blown up. Soulstorm picks up right after the ending of New and Tasty. Abe's considered a hero and a legend for his act of heroism, but he's still grappling with the enormous weight that's been placed on his shoulders as his actions have inspired a revolution among Madokans the odd world over. He's forced to hit the road when their temporary sanctuary is overrun by the forces of Mullock, the big bad corporate executive from the first game. See, the Oddworld at large doesn't believe that a single Madokan could have been responsible for destroying Rupture Farms, and Mullock is accused of doing it himself as part of an insurance fraud scheme. So while Mullock is out for Abe's blood to clear his name and reputation, Abe finds himself having to get to the bottom of a far more sinister scheme than the first game. Tonally, the game differed significantly from the original run of games. The original games were loaded with a mix of satire and dark comedy, making Oddworld a dark reflection of our own world. While Soulstorm does indeed have its own fair share of satire, it's no longer the main attraction. Soulstorm's tone is much more introspective and mystical, with Abe having to come to terms that he's got a responsibility as the savior of the Madokans, and the game doubles down on the spiritual elements of the world. I actually really like this change, as even though the plot of the game is pretty straightforward, all things considered, the element of mystery and mysticism makes the whole thing super engaging. I have heard some people complain about the lack of comedy compared to other games in the series like Exodus or Munch's Odyssey, but I personally don't mind it. As much as I love the dark humor of those games, it also felt like it got a little cartoony at times. Again, I don't dislike them but I find this game a welcome change of pace tone-wise. This is really helped along by the gloriously gorgeous visuals and incredible design work, but this is Oddworld, so that's par for the course. Let's move on to the gameplay now. The gameplay is built on the same foundation as New and Tasty. It's a cinematic platformer with you climbing ledges and sneaking around to solve puzzles and get through enemy encounters unscathed. Abe's got himself a double jump now, which makes the platforming easier, which I'm having a hard time deciding if that's a good thing or a bad thing, since it loses the careful planning and weight the first couple games had, so I'm just gonna file it under... thing. Just like the first game, Abe can chant in order to possess enemies, but this mechanic actually works more like it does in Munch's Odyssey, where you control this little orb that flies around and you need to use to take control of things. It's actually really satisfying to stun one enemy, then immediately leap to the next enemy, and so on. It's a welcome change when the game allows for it. You still communicate with other Madokans via game speak in order to lead them to safety and to solve puzzles, but this time you can arm them with items. Their AI isn't the best, but it's never really given me any real problems. And just like in the first game, you're graded on how many Madokans you save, though it works a little bit differently here. In the first game, in order to get the good ending, you needed to save at least 50% of the Madokans throughout the game, but here, each level has a threshold of saving at least 80% of the Madokans, and you need to do that in a certain number of levels in order to reach the good ending. I actually really like this change, because some levels have way more Madokans than others, like these sections where you have to protect them while they're climbing to safety. 
and partly because the game actually tells you how many Madokans are in a given level and gives you the option to go back and find them. My biggest problem with the original games was always that half of the Madokans you need for the best ending were in really obscure, hard to reach places, and if you couldn't find them, then the game would wag its finger at you for not doing a good enough job. But here, you know when you need to look for something hidden and out of the way. But back up, what do I mean you can arm your followers? Well, that leads us to the new main mechanic of Soulstorm, crafting. Throughout the game, you can find various items to craft things to help you throughout your adventure, like a smokescreen to hide from sight, a mine to disrupt enemy patrols, etc. I've heard a lot of mixed opinions about this system, but I personally love it. It opens up a whole new layer of strategy and flexibility to the puzzles, especially since the game often gives you just enough materials to make do with throughout the level. You can choose to sneak around enemies normally, incapacitate them one-on-one -on -one like you're Batman, or just brute force them by pelting them with water bottles. Speaking of water bottles, fire and putting fire out is another prevalent mechanic I've seen a lot in this game, with you having to spread or contain fire in order to clear away hazards or proceed through them. Though I will say, when you throw bottles of either flammable liquid or dowsing liquid, the hitboxes can be ridiculously inconsistent. Sometimes you put them out no problem, other times... They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because... Now on that note, I should point out the game isn't as polished as it could be. Items will float in the air for seemingly no reason, for example, hitboxes aren't always what you'd like them to be, and sometimes the enemy AI just decides to go for a coffee break. This screen of the game's second level took me over an hour because the enemy AI kept bugging out. Now, admittedly, by the time you're watching this, most of those issues have been patched out, but come on. Something that can't be patched out, however, is the length. Now, I don't mind a long game, don't get me wrong, I'm an RPG guy after all, but each individual level is ridiculously long and exhausting to get through, and if you want to track down all of the secrets and get all the hidden Madokans for the good ending, you're gonna need to spend well over an hour, maybe even two in some instances, per level. That's not exactly an inherently bad thing, but it does kind of make Soulstorm a chore to play through if you're not in the mood. And I'm not saying the game is too difficult either, I mean, come on, it's Oddworld, I'd feel cheated if I wasn't getting ruthlessly murdered every other screen. But with each level being as long as it is, it's hard to devote a lot of time to the game. With that out of the way, I should probably bring up the most important thing about this game that'll determine whether you like it or not. This game isn't exactly a remake of Exodus as much as it is an alternate sequel to the original game. To explain why that's significant design-wise, let me illustrate. Let's say that these dots are the main mechanics of Abe's Odyssey. Since Exodus was made on the quick, they didn't really have much time to experiment with new mechanics, so instead they just beefed up all those core mechanics, and that worked out great for them. Now, Soulstorm didn't have those same constraints with time or money, so instead the game expanded by adding a ton of new mechanics, from the crafting system, to the RTS mechanics they borrowed from Muncha's Odyssey, to the escort sections, to the boss fights like the Slig Mama, which as a side effect, means those original mechanics are more or less the same as they were in the original game. Now from what I can gather, this change in design philosophy is where the game tends to lose people, and I can't say I blame them. To give you another example of what I mean, one of my favorite games of all time is Banjo-Kazooie. Part of the reason I adore it so much is because of its simplicity. It's densely packed, easy to understand, it knows its limits, and even uses them to great effect. It's just wonderful. Its sequel, Banjo-Tooie, was way more ambitious, expanding its scope to the nth degree with loads of new mechanics, but that also means that it's bloated, confusing, and unfocused. Now, at its core, Soulstorm's gameplay is still the same, but I'm not gonna lie, I prefer to see a few core mechanics improved and experimented with in unique ways as opposed to throwing more toys on top of it. But all the same, I don't think the new features in Soulstorm are bad, per se. I totally get why someone wouldn't be happy with this game as a result, though, and I dare say Soulstorm might actually appeal more to non-fans than it does to people who've followed the series for a long time. So those are my thoughts on Oddworld Soulstorm. Is it a good game? I'd argue it is. But if you compare it to Abe's Exodus, your mileage may vary. Personally, I think the engaging story and numerous quality of life improvements make this game very much worth it, as does the crafting system that adds a lot of creativity, strategy, and flexibility to the puzzles. I know it isn't really the best thing ever to have the game have a ton of bugs that need to be patched out, but at this point I'm willing to give Oddworld inhabitants the benefit of the doubt, seeing as they got a long and illustrious history of being screwed over by the people they work with. So you know what? I really like Oddworld Soulstorm. It's not for everybody, and it definitely has its share of frustrations, but I'd say it's worth a look. 
As I said before, it's probably not going to live up to expectations given its long development cycle and the series' long hiatus, but as it stands, I still think it's alright. My final score? Oddworld Soulstorm is decent. 7 out of 10.